Let's take a little break from the action. Uh, I thought you might like some more detail on how I actually installed those adapter caps. I happen to have a parts chassis here, fairly picked over, but it still has the electrolytics here, so uh, I can demonstrate on this. And quite frankly, when I was doing the other one, um, it was some trial and error, and it can be tough to have a camera going while you're working on a set because it gets in the way. <laughs> and I really wanted to focus on what I was doing, so I will recreate it here for you all. So here are the three caps that I removed from the other chassis. This is actually a TS-18, but it's 90 plus percent the same as a TS-4 like we just worked on. For some reason these two don't have their cardboard covers anymore, they might have fallen off, maybe they never had them to begin with. But the whole reason these have cardboard covers and that these are on insulated phenolic wafers is that this is a transformerless set. However, it is not hot chassis. This chassis is not going to the AC line, but the, <laughs> the cans on these very much are. So, these really should have cardboard covers. The suck could be plugged in, uh, you reach in to swap a tube out or something, you would not want to touch that. Now the way they have the power switch, as it was originally designed, the switch is on the negative side, the can side. So actually while the suck's turned off, these should be disconnected from anything. That's, I think that's why they put the switch on the common side and not on the hot side. Not that this is polarized, but in terms of the, the after the rectifiers, this this is the return side. I think it's uh, to protect anything up here from uh, any potential shock hazard when the set is turned off at least. Anyway, so I want to replace these with adapter caps. First, let's take a closer look at how these are actually installed. As twist lock capacitors come, there is no phenolic base. It's an outside aluminum can with a steel ring underneath this crimped edge that has four tabs sticking out. These are the twist locks. That's why they call these twist locks because these will go through four holes in the chassis or insulating wafer and then they get twisted around to lock it into place. And then there are between one and four inner lugs. That's where you hook up your wires. These go to capacitors. In this case, they used all four sections. I clipped them off because I, I removed this cap. But imagine there are four intact lugs there. Those will get wired up. Next, each of these lugs is a symbol except for one that's blank. Every capacitor has these. They go in the same pattern. They use the same symbols. It is blank, a half circle, a square, and a triangle. You need to know that because, well, when you install these, you want to get the new ones oriented the same way as the originals. It'll make your life a lot easier when it comes to wiring it up. So, you could remove these by undoing all the wire connections on the lugs of the caps and straightening out the twist lock tabs and some of them do have components soldered to them and you could detach the phenolic base and pull the cap off and in the past I've shown this you can then open this up clean out the old cap drill holes mount your new caps inside and either uh, if you chose to uncrimp the bottom, you could put all the stuff back inside and recrimp it. That is not an easy task, especially if you want to uh, make it invisible. You can cut this off and then glue it back on or use aluminum type duct tape. Or you can file or grind this crimped edge off. In which case the top just slides back, slides right off, and then you can kind of fit it back down or glue it on with epoxy or something. In other words, you can reuse this, you can restuff it, you can rehook up all the leads. I've done it many times in the past. 
I don't care to do it again. Uh, so it's something really special. It takes time. Uh, it's messy. Some say there's toxic chemicals inside. I don't have any definitive proof either way because I don't have the chemical formulas for what's inside of these. Uh, but it certainly is time consuming. Uh, and I have a lot of these sets to work on. And uh, my time is somewhat limited. So when a product like this Adapticap came along, I wanted to see it could, if it could help me with this process. Now these adapt-a-caps are were originally designed for just this scenario where you have a phenolic base. These are the same size. They drop right on. They fit right on those mounting holes. And, and these are uh, FR4 or some similar fiberglass epoxy good insulator. So in other words, this will also serve the same function as these, which is to isolate the chassis from the caps. Okay, so I did not choose to uncrimp all the caps, but obviously I removed them. How did I do that? Well, first I thought I would drill out these rivets. These are riveted on, by the way. First I thought I would drill out the rivets. I tried it from the underside, they started spinning. I tried it from the top side, they started spinning. So I decided, well, forget that. Um, I don't care about destroying these because I'm not going to be reusing these wafers. Uh, I also have a supply of ones that were never used if I needed some, so I decided to just break them, which is pretty easy to do. And that's also a problem if you want to preserve them and reuse these and restuff them. When you try to remove these, you may very well break this anyways, which is another reason why I chose to not go that route, because they're so fragile to begin with. Even when you don't want to break them, they often break. Now I'm going to demonstrate on this one because this is a single section, so it's the easiest one to do, and it's the one I started with on the main chassis. Alright, and we have two connections down below. Since I'm not going to reuse this cap, uh, I could cut these off down to preserve as much of the original wiring as possible. However, I already know from doing the other one, I have enough excess wire here. I can just clip it off and leave the lugs like so. Now either, before you, before you cut them, make note of which is which, because the wiring is basically the same color. Or, it's pretty easy to trace out. This cap in particular, one side goes right to the AC switch, and the other goes to a rectifier. Now this is a smaller one than the other two. This is originally, or this has potential to be a three section. So that's the other curious thing. So there's only one cap in here, there's two in here, there's three in here. But both of these have provisions for four caps. Even though they didn't use them because of uh, mass production, they, they make them so they could have four sections. And they have all four symbols on them, they just didn't choose to use all of them. And this is a smaller variety that has three. Now I mentioned that I got some engineering samples when uh boy you can see how bad this cap is all that crud there that's the dried electrolyte well, it oozed out and then it dried out so that's definitely a bad cap uh, i got engineering samples that had several other flavors for example this is a three section however it's also a smaller uh piece it does not line up with the mounting holes this is their main thing this is what they currently sell this is the universal. This has all four suctions, and this is the standard. This is the most common type you're going to encounter. And it does line up with these holes. So you simply just use one of the four sections. And for the others, you use two of them or three of them. They're all the same size. They all fit. Just figure out what symbol they used. So on this one, they chose the lug that has no symbol on it. And if you look on the bottoms of these, this has no symbol. There's your half circle, your square, your triangle. So match up your new cap with this so you can use the same symbol, which are denoted on the schematic as well. All right, we have our cap unmounted. We have a new cap, adapt a cap we're gonna put on there. What about this crud? Well, turns out these rivets are actually pretty darn easy to snap off. Use some eye protection. 
get a pair of heavy duty wire cutters and just get it in there and squeeze. Oops, it was easy on the other chassis. Oh yeah, there's also a uh, an insulating washer. Helps to get that out first too. So you can get this fully on there. Or lines and pliers. There we go. And bam, it's nice, clean, ready to go. Let's do the other one. All right. So one thing I know about drilling is it makes little metal filing bits that can get down in there and potentially short something out. Uh, same with a Dremel tool, but by just snapping them off, yeah, a bit of <laughs> material went flying across the room, but you're left with totally unmarred surface ready to go. And that's going to go down like so, and to secure it, I use these guys. Button cap. 4 40 3 8 inch long screws. Forget where I got these, but it came with a set of locking washer, nut, and screw. Your Allen head. They look a lot like rivets when they're installed. Just pop these in here. Put your nut and washer on the other side. Tighten it down, and you're done with that part of it. Now, however, I prefer to install my caps before I mount that, but by all means you do not have to. So one of my um, viewers pointed out, if you do install the caps first, let me grab one. Oh, and as far as caps go, the spacing on these holes is five millimeters. So try to get five millimeter uh, spacing on your leads if you can't, and they're a little bit bigger then you can still manage it because we have a number of holes here. All four of these holes are connected together. Ideally you want to use these two, but if the spacing on your cap is larger you could certainly use the outer one. So the thing is, if you mount this and solder it in and have it completely flushed out, when you go to put in the wiring you're going to strip the ends of these wires and you're going to put them into these holes and solder them in place. If you strip off, say, half an inch of wire, the wires are going to poke up through the other side and they could potentially um, get too close to this. The, the outer case on this, that metal, that is going to the negative lead on this cap. So if you had a wire that was going to the positive side and was poking up and cut through that in, that insulating coating or there was enough voltage that it might arc through it, that would be bad. What I did is I picked up a whole mess of little standoff insulators. These guys got some DigiKey spacer, circular, general purpose, two and a half millimeters. Made in Germany by S-Man Corporation. Might not be how you pronounce it. That's how I choose to pronounce it. So what are these? It's almost a little plastic gizmo that has slots that are spaced so we can do that. And then we mount it on our adapter cap like so and that will help Sure, if you tried hard enough and had a long strip wire and you really shoved it up there, you could still short out, but I think this uh, helps quite a bit. So, the way I like to do it, I mount all my caps up here on the sub-assembly, solder them in, trim the lead short, get this all ready to go. And then I put it down, and then I put in my screws and uh, secure it. So I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll just put one screw in because I do want to mainly show you how you do the wiring on the underside because that's the tricky part. So I'll just take one of these. Well, I guess I'll... Well, I don't really want to solder a cap. Also, I want to point out, 
I got some engineering samples when I first started playing around with these. Some of them are, they do have this hole spacing, but uh, only have provisions for a single capacitor. That's what I actually used on the other one. I don't really want to talk about these much though because these are not currently for sale, but this is actually what I use. I only have a few of them. Um, so uh, I'd rather not demonstrate with that because you all won't be able to get them, so let's we'll stick with this guy. However, I'm not going to mount this cap because I bought this for another project and I don't want to uh, actually cut the leads on it just yet. So let's pretend I installed the capacitor. So do that. And then I will grab a nut. It's a little bit tight underneath there, so I actually did unmount the selenium rectifiers that are on the other side when I went and did this. But that one's not too bad to get at. That's a screw coming through right there. I think I think I might just be able to manage that. It requires a little dexterity. Yep, I got it. And then grab an Allen wrench, which was here, it's still here, here we go, is that one of these guys? Of course you could use flathead or Phillips screws, it's just look nice. And that, I got a pack of a hundred, it costs next to nothing, I probably got it from McMaster Car or Granger. I'll try to dig up a link, but it's been a while. Alright, so there you go. Pretend I put in both of them. Nice and secured. Okay, now for the interesting bit. How do we actually wire up the other side? I did just go ahead and unmount that selenium. So we can get at this more easily. I didn't disconnect it, I just removed the screw. If you choose to continue to use it, that's all you need to do, and then we can just move it out of the way. Now here's one of the wires we need to attach, and I believe this is the other one. So all I want to do is strip and tin the ends of those wires, and of course stick them into the right holes. All right, so we should also tin up the circuit board where they go. Now again, on the bottom, we have our, our symbols, triangles, squares, and so on. And the outer ring, that's the negative. All the negatives on the cans go together. So we're going to tin up the wire. And let's pretend it's going to go into the square. So that would be this guy. Well, I could have tinned this up beforehand if I planned things out better, but I didn't. Let's see if I can get in there even closer. Right, get this out of the way. So I want this wire to connect to that. So, uh, sometimes I hold the wire with my hand when it gets in there a little tight. Some small needle nose pliers are handy. It also helps to bend the wire a little bit. So when it had solder lugs, the wires were coming in from the side. But with the circuit board, they need to go in down. So it helps to put a little 90 degree turn in the wire. And these are solid core wires, so when you bend them, they tend to stay bent. And I'm trying to not obscure the view while I do this. Heat up the circuit board and push the wire into it. Hold it, and then let go, and I'm done. That's it. And then I'll do the same for the negative. Get in there and tin up the hole. Tin my wire. This time I have enough room I can just use my hand. Put it, and heat up the hole, put the wire in, and we're done. That's all I had to do. That's why I like using these. It's wired up the same way it was originally, matches the wiring diagram. I didn't have to install a terminal strip, didn't have to 
install new wiring, anything, just like it was before. Except the wires are going in like this instead of in like that to lugs. Now the adapter cap uh, guy, guys, say they are working on some new products, ones that will have lugs rather than holes in the circuit board. I have no idea when or if those might ever come out, so th right now this is the thing that you can order, and this is how it goes. Now if you did want those common negatives to connect to the metal chassis, all you have to do is short out the jumper here. They put provisions in there so that if you want the negatives to go to this, so if you, if you short out that jumper there's a little label there that says frame then those two screws I put in will be going to the negative side of the cap so that'll complete your negative circuit this does not work that way so there will be a number of connections going to the outer ring and we're going to, to feeding into various circuits into the set that's how you do it if there were two three or four sections you would just repeat the same process for the rest of the caps I was able to do that entire thing in less than an hour. If I had removed those caps, heated these up, gotten the cardboard covers off, opened up the cans, restuffed them, drilled little holes, fed capacitors in, recrimped it, resealed it, <laughs> remounted them, reattached all the wires, that would have taken me half a day. And I probably would have spread out over a couple days because I would have gotten tired of doing it <laughs> instead. I'm going to finish this whole project in one evening.